Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Yes, it is me and yes, I am back and I will be making more tutorials in the coming months because I can now and of course because I miss you guys and uh, I want to show you guys some cool new features that just got added to Construct 3. So let's just start talking about it. Uh, the timeline feature. It's new, it's exciting. Uh, as you can see here, I've done this cool little animation with Tomba. He does a little, he does a little roll into the screen. He does a little jump and then his title comes down from the top. I've done this all with the timeline feature. Uh, even these little bouncy guys, I have done this purely with the timeline tool. There has been no frame animation and no event sheet nonsense. No do this, wait two seconds, do this. Um, this feature is really cool, it's really customizable, and it's really useful. This video is going to be more of an overview of the timeline feature, so what it does, why it's useful, and I'll show you how to make it work. Um, so let's just get started. So I'm going to apologize right off the bat for not being as concise as I probably usually am just because I haven't actually done this in a while. So hopefully uh, after a few more videos I'll get back up to running speed. Um, but for now, just you're just going to have to deal with me, so I apologize. Um, before we get to what's going on here with Tomba, let's actually go over to this other layout that I have set up. Um, and again, I've created these two little bounce animations with the timeline tool using some different uh, techniques. Uh, I'll use that word technique. Um, but, so before I show you how to do this, let's just show you how to make it work, period. Um, now, first of all, just close your eyes, and I'm going to delete this timeline object type. You can open them again now. Um, we'll start off real quickly by making this ball bounce because I know you guys just want to get started. It's been like three minutes already and I, I haven't told you anything useful. Um, also close your eyes again while I delete this. Okay. All right. So what I want you guys to do is go over to the timeline and then you're going to add a timeline. This is going to let you make a timeline, which I guess is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to call this bounce green, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, when you double click on this timeline here on the little icon, this little, it, this timeline is empty box will come up. Uh, I have been liking docking it here on the bottom. That helps um, since uh, you'll see in a second why. Now, this timeline is empty, which means it's not associated with any objects, which means it's not doing anything at all. So what you want to do is over to this plus button on the left over here, click on that, and it'll let you pick the instance that you want uh, for the timeline. So this is basically what uh, object the timeline is referring to. So in this case, ball three, don't worry about the dash five, that's just the instance number. I think it might be the UID. It's possible that that is what it is, and I correct, I'm correct in that assumption that that five does represent the UID. Um, so right away, we're given this little timeline thing, and if you're familiar with Flash or After Effects, um, this is sort of basically the same setup as something like that. If you're not familiar with this at all, I'll sort of go over how this works. So basically, you have uh, this timeline where this red line represents where you are currently in the timeline. So uh, we'll worry about that in a second. This green line represents how long the timeline goes. So uh, for right now, I'll just leave it over here. It doesn't really matter quite yet because we're not doing anything yet. So um, let me just show you how this works. Now, there's going to be these things called keyframes that move along the timeline. Each keyframe represents where that particular object is going to be or what that particular value over the course of time is going to be at that particular time. So, for example, um, for the sake of me doing something real quick, first of all, I have to click this little edit button in order to affect anything on the timeline. I can move these, but um, I can't actually add any keyframes. And a keyframe is going to be important uh, concept for you guys to learn as well. But for the sake of this, I'm going to click on this little pen tool and then I can right click here on this red line and it's going to set a keyframe exactly where uh, this red line is. I believe I can do it anywhere and it'll always put it on the red line. So that's basically your little cursor. Keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, let's delete all these. Just control Z all this stuff away. All right. So basically what we want the ball to do is just go down and go back up. And I'm going to do this in one second increments, uh, even though it's not going to look realistic, but that's okay for what we're doing here. Um, so I want to take this red line and put it on one second. And we're going to look at the Y axis because that's going to be the up and down. Now, since I have this red line here at the one second mark, if I make sure you have the little, uh, little pen tool clicked, if I select our object and then move it down, 
it's going to create this line. Now, what you might think that does is automatically create a keyframe and move the ball there, but we actually need to set this keyframe. Now, what I want to do actually is deselect everything. As you can see here, if I click, if I had clicked what I had before, all these are selected. I just want to select this Y little bar right here so the whole thing is blue. Right click and set a keyframe there. Now, this top keyframe uh, is just, uh, it moves all the keyframes in that, what's that word? Not row, column. Uh, so that's useful, um, but I'll show you uh, how to use it a little bit later. Now I'm going to take our little red line again and move it to the two seconds. And then I'm going to create another keyframe here and move my ball back up to where it was. Now uh, you'll see right now why this won't work uh, if I press play. As you can see, none of my animations are working anymore. And that's because there's no thing telling our... Uh, little animations to start working. So if I go to my event sheet and on the start of layout event that I have already preset for some reason, if we add an action, we're gonna see that even though we click on, like we can click on this ball and look around, there is no timeline uh, like action here anywhere. It's not at system or anything. Um, this confused me at first, but if you go over to object types, you have to actually add a new object type and add the timeline object. So this is super important because then you can actually use the timeline features. Now, this still doesn't actually do anything even if I leave it just like that. So I'm going to go to the event sheet and go to on start of layout. We're going to add an action and just go to timeline now that the object is here. And we're going to see all these cool features. Um, I'm going to click play all for now. I want everything to just start at the same time. We can go over some of this other stuff later or you guys can play around with it. It's actually all pretty self-explanatory. but Let's double click on play all. Now if I go back to my layout and press play, you can see now that all my animations are doing this cool little bounce thing, except for my green one, because for some reason. The reason, of course, is because I did a step backwards. Um, instead of moving my timeline, creating a keyframe, and then moving up, what I should have done was actually Let's delete this keyframe. And I'm going to delete this top little keyframe here, this master keyframe as well, just um, for cleanliness. I'm not exactly sure what it does when it's by itself, but for now, we're just going to leave it off. Um, let's go back to the Y, and this time, make sure the edit tool is still on. Grab your ball, take him back up, back to where he was, and then now add a keyframe. And um, we can delete this X one for now because we don't need it. I'll press play now and you'll see that he does actually continue to bounce back up, but he does not repeat like these other ones. And that's because we're going to add a, uh, a, another cool little, a cool little feature of the timeline tool, the loop feature. So let's actually grab uh, the green line and drag it all the way back to the two seconds. Now, even if I press play, it's still going to bounce back down and all the way back up, but not do anything. But if we click on the bounce screen here, click on the top part, of the name, this is different actually. If you click on the ball, it shows you some different features, but if you click on the top where it says bounce green, it's gonna give you some features that I like, one of them being the loop function. So if we just click on that, now if we press play, he does bounce back up and continue to do so infinitely, really. And this is really useful if you wanna have, uh, say something just moving along in the background, like clouds, I guess, or birds. Um, just bouncing plants. Did I say that? Did I say plants? We'll go with that. All right. So uh, the problem is that our ball doesn't bounce very realistically like our other balls. And this is because of something called easing. And easing is basically how things animate in between keyframes. And I'll explain it with using uh, one of the cool features that I do really like that they added, um, custom eases. So um, I'm going to save this real quick. And um, I do have some eases already made, but we'll make a new one. So under the timeline folder, there is another folder called eases. If we right click on that and add an ease, uh, we can call it um, easy ease, easy e. You can call it whatever you want, it does not matter. Um, if you double click on it, you can see it opens up this little editor here. Now, what we have right here is basically how our object is going to animate. So now that here that it's closer to the bottom, and I wish those lines were a little bit thicker, but um, our line basically does a little, a very, very light S movement. 
Um, so if I actually exit out of this real quick um, and click on our bounce screen over here, click on the ease, and as you can see now, we have our easy e uh, added now to our list of eases. So if I press play now, you might notice a really subtle difference that the ball sort of slowly comes to each side. Now, I'll show you a little bit more extreme way of doing this. If we double click on this, um, and I make and I just like pull this green bar far down and move the red one far up. Now it's like a much bigger S. You'll see that this does affect the way the ball bounces. As you can see, he does kind of like a weird thing. Now um, this is because of a lot of reasons. Um, but what's actually happening is our ball is going below where it was before, coming back up, then going over where it's going to end up, and then end up back where it was. If that was kind of confusing, uh, go ahead and play around with the eases yourself and kind of mess around with the little handles and you can kind of see how it actually works. Alternatively, if you click on your dude over here, go to the bounce screen and click on the ease, you can change some other stuff. Um, so for example, if you go to like in out exponential, it does some things uh, which are kind of interesting. Um, and you can play around with those to kind of see how things work. Now I'll show you a little bit about how I did the red ball, which has a lot more little interesting things going on with it real quick. So what I've done here uh, is actually added some width and height keyframes here. So um, there's something interesting about the keyframes that I want you guys to keep in mind and is super important to understand. Um, but if you click on bounce red and you see that our uh, path mode or our result mode is actually relative it says default but default is relative so if you click on width right here you can see that the result mode is relative this means that uh what the timeline changes is actually relative to what it is currently um so for example um you can see the width right here our value is zero that doesn't mean that the width is zero now if i change this i think if i do this it'll change it to what i want um it doesn't mean the width is zero. It means that it's it has changed none compared to what it is currently. So the width currently is 17. And uh, our first keyframe here is zero. So if we go over here to this middle keyframe, you can see that, or sorry, to this keyframe right before this middle keyframe, it actually, the value is negative five. And this doesn't mean that the width is negative five. It means it's five less than what it is at zero or naturally. So what's happening here is it's easing in between um, zero, or sorry, 17, which is zero from 17, to 17 minus five, which of course is 12, and I'm good at math. Um, so I'll show you real quick if I actually, what you can do with the timeline is set the playback rate, and I'm gonna set it back to, to 0 0.3 real quick, which is really slow, and you'll see that it slowly gets thinner before it hits the bottom. And so that's what's happening here is the width is, is thinning all the way to negative five. Then I have it go back to zero because I want it to get back to its full width right before it hits the ground because what it does is flatten out. Let's like even make this even slower. So what happens is, uh, Wow, this is really slow. Okay, so it gets really thin, and then when it hits the ground, it flattens out, gets thin again, and then widens back out to the top. So I have it here on the width go back to zero, and then it actually thins out again to negative five, which is, again, 12. Five away from it at zero, which is 17. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> it's sounding kind of crazy as I'm saying it out loud. Um, I'm doing the same thing with the height. Um, you can see that here it's at zero, so it's regular height. Here it's still also at zero, but then when it hits the ground, and I can show you if I change this um, to negative eight, which is what it is actually at, what happens is it goes all the way and then it quickly flattens out. And then it does come back to normal here, or starting to go back to normal here, it goes back to zero. So if we watch it again really slowly, it's the width is staying the same. I mean, sorry, the height is staying the same all the way down until it flattens out, and then it comes back up. All right, so hopefully that made some semblance of sense. Um, I'm going to cut this video off here. 
Um, that's basically how I did the bounce animation for that. I'll be making a couple more videos, apparently, um, for some of the other stuff I wanted to go over. I didn't realize that this was going to take as long as it did. Alright guys, thanks for watching. You can follow me at Action Cancel on Twitter. If you want to support me, you can follow and subscribe and like the video and you can comment on the video as well. Uh, if you'd like to support me monetarily, you can find my itch page. There is a link to it in the description. Um, there are some assets there. You can play some of my demos or uh, buy some of my games if you'd like. Um, there will be more videos coming up soon, so stay posted and thanks for watching. Good night.